Okay, week uh, 19, day one. It's amazing how when I start the week, I remember what day it is, but after that, I just lose track. Anyway, this is uh, roof week. Um, a lot happening today. Um, Lowe's is going to deliver the uh, roofing stuff, uh, the sheathing, underlayment, that stuff, uh, uh, the uh, uh, fasteners, everything else. Um, the shipping company uh, will deliver the uh, roofing. It's uh, Andura. Uh, it looks like um, corrugated metal, but it's actually an asphalt composite material. Uh, it's supposed to have a really long life and uh, big sheets, easy to go down, easy to cut, um, and lightweight. So that's a good thing. Um, also, uh, the slope of this roof is a 612. Um, so, um, it's kind of steep. Uh, it's good for when the snow gets on it or anything else comes, it'll you know, run off. But working on top of it, not looking forward to that. Uh, the front, that's bad enough. But uh, if you remember the back, the whole property slopes off. So, you know, the front uh, from, you know, falling off the roof is, you know, 15 feet. Uh, falling off the roof in the back is, you know, 150 miles. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, um, also, um, coming today is uh, a, uh, a boom lift. Uh, I'm not going to crawl around on the roof as I'm going to crawl around the roof as little as I have to. So plus I have to get up to the uh, gable ends uh, and get the sheathing on those up here uh, and carrying a, a sheet of, of uh, OSB up a ladder and trying to get nailed in by myself it just doesn't make any sense. So uh, we'll do that first. Uh, Got to check the rafter tails, make sure they're all in line, see if those need to be cut. Um, and then uh, we go from there, okay? There we go. Okay, you do not get up there with two huge sheets of OSB or anything else without a little help. Say hello to my little friend. Uh, it's a 40 foot boom lift. It's also helping me pack the earth around here. And then I built a little uh, panel carrier for the side of it so I can throw three or four panels on the side and then lift it up and do what I need to do. Okay, end of day one. And it's been a long freaking day. So I started with this. There are two um, truss supports that are uh, required. Uh, one runs on this side, the other one's on this side, and I need to finish it off there. Uh, that'll uh, support the ceiling. I'll do that before I put the roof on. That'll give me plenty of room. I also started sheathing the sides. Got that one except for the tip top up there. And got two sheets in the middle over there. We'll finish that one up in the morning. Okay. It's early. Well, it's like uh, 6.45. Sun's already up and uh, it's gonna be a warm one today. So uh, we're uh, up, working, finish uh, these, uh, this end wall. Uh, get that done, and then get that end there done, uh, and then I think we can start putting some sheathing on the roof. Um, but yeah, it's going to be hot and humid today, so uh, what a fun time to be working on the roof. <sighs> there we go. Okay, day uh, three, Wednesday. It's amazing how I lose track of days. Um, it's supposed to be hot today. They said the heat index should be 105, 108. Oh, great. So we'll see what we get done. There was no end of day video yesterday. I was uh, a little irritated because uh, I didn't think I got enough done yesterday. Um, roof thing bothers the hell out of me. So anyway, um, I got both ends um, sheathed up. Uh, I got uh, the uh, fly rafters built on both sides, the overhang for the gable ends. <clears throat> that took a while. Um, I honestly don't know how in the world that would have been done had I not had that boom. Um, but uh, that was really my frustration because the boom goes back Friday uh, after lunch and I was concerned I wasn't going to have the roof done. Well, I'm not going to have the roof done. There's no way I'd have that done by then. Uh, so then I didn't know what I was going to do, and uh, I could extend the boom, no big deal, blah, blah, blah. 
But the uh, good thing about it is there are people that know what they're doing. So um, the, one of the guys that came over and helped me uh, set the trusses, uh, Tommy, uh, he's going to come back over uh, on Monday, uh, and uh, he's been in construction for years, so uh, he's also a squirrel. So he loves running around on roofs and everything else, something that I don't. Um, and so we'll be fine. So I feel much better about that. So I'll get whatever I can get done today and tomorrow done, and then um, we'll go from there. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the background. I got the first sheet of, uh, first row of uh, um, sheathing down. So we'll see what we can get done. But hot. Here we go. Okay. Okay, end of day three. Um, this day started out to be a frustrating day. Uh, if you remember, we had the first sheet of first row of uh, roof sheathing on, and we still do down there. It's just right here we didn't. And you might wonder why we didn't. Well, first row really doesn't make a lot of difference because you don't make any cuts really. You just cut at the end and the overhang. But second row, you start with a half sheet and you start working your way back. Well, the problem was after that first full sheet, it wasn't landing on a rafter. A truss. Come to find out, this is the mud room. So there's the entrance to the uh, mud room from the outside there. Come to find out that the truss on the outside is the last one that's 24 inches on center all the way down. All those are laid out 24 inches on center. Somehow when we got here, somebody took a measurement from this wall and went 24 inches this way. After doing an offset here because the... Uh, uh, end plate is set in an uh, inch and a half. So it throws everything off an inch and a half all the way down, which only shows when you start putting the plywood on. Because if you look from the outside, these, well, I'm giving you vertigo, these were all straight because they're only off an inch and a half. But when you put it back in line, they're much better. So that means this sheet is cut. So I'll take this one out. The one before it falls on a, um, a truss, then this one will reach to here and fall on a truss. So it'll be just fine. Oh, talk about frustrating. Trying to figure that out all dad gum day. Okay, uh, day four, Thursday. So uh, not supposed to be nearly as hot today uh, in the 80s. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, it'll still be very sunny and probably a little humid, so we'll go from there. Um, the uh, booms out back, uh, need to work on the back a little bit. Um, you may be able to see right here the, uh, oops, how do I move my finger? There we go. This um, two by four goes all the way down on this side uh, and it just strengthens the trusses, gives it the rigidity it needs. Uh, that needs to be finished across here. Uh, also the tails out on the trusses that stick out. Um, I'm not doing the fascia right now. I'm going to do that later um, because I want to put composite material on there so I never have to replace it. It'll never rot. Uh, but in order to keep the, the, the tails of the uh, trusses that stick out, instead of them being able to do this when you sheet it, I need to keep them exactly on center. So that means that I put another 2x4 all the way down uh, at the tail just to keep it nice and rigid. I've already done the front side. I just need to do the back side. So I'll finish up those two. Uh, I also need to put uh, uh, the fabric in. Um, the, uh, if you notice, so over here, this is just landscaping fabric, just like you'd put out in your garden or your patio or whatever. And what it's made for is when the sheathing comes down, there's a gap in there. Uh, and I'm having the, uh, walls and the ceiling spray foamed. So you gotta have something to stop the foam and grab onto, so it'll do that. So just, uh, normal, uh, fabric across there, stapling that kind of creates that void. Uh, so there's uh, something for them to spray to. So uh, that's what we'll do. Uh, we're going to do that. And then see where else we go. Got the uh, isotunes in the mail yesterday. Someone didn't pay attention to my Facebook post, but that's okay. So uh, uh, we'll uh, get some music going and uh, here we go. Okay, end of uh, day four, Thursday. I... Uh, Finished up this internal bracing, 
So that's the bracing that the uh, trusses call for. <clears throat> There'll be another Z brace up here um, just to make sure because the uh, the gable wall, since it's attached only here and along the thing, it makes it uh, easy to fall that way for uh, all the gable walls. Um, so that way we always brace it back. Um, did that. Got the uh, rafter tails all centered out here. Uh, so they're ready for sheathing. Um, finish the um, fabric over the mudroom for the foam insulation. Um, did the one over here, uh, but I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this at all. Um, it's almost four and a half feet tall because... So this is the top of the wall. But the roof sets on the truss up there. So they're going to spray the ceiling, okay? So they spray the ceiling, and then they spray the exterior wall. But they got to spray up this to meet the ceiling. That way there's insulation all the way down. So the choices are put OSB on the back of this or something that will just stop the foam, and that's all that needs to be done. So the guy doing the foam suggested just put up uh, landscaping fabric. Well, I grabbed landscaping fabric, but I grabbed a uh, three-foot roll. So that's a five-foot gap. So I tried to cut it in half and then double it. <clears throat> and I just don't like that. I mean, you're not going to see it. It'll be in the ceiling. You won't see it. The challenge, though, is because, because of the way it is, this is a weak point right here. I mean, that's open, but that's still a weak point right there. So when he's spraying the foam, I'm not sure if it'll actually hold that. Uh, so I'm going to look for a, uh, a five-foot roll and see if that'll be easier. And if not, then I'll have to come back here and, and drape it down this way and staple it. So I don't know. We'll see. But I do not like that. Okay, uh, day five. So uh, Friday, uh, getting a little later start today. It's uh, almost nine. Uh, I went up and uh, got some breakfast. Uh, I need to go in and get some, uh, some more uh, nails for the uh, nail gun because I had to do that before uh, Monday uh, for the roof. That way we don't run out of those. That was my excuse to go get breakfast. Um, then that. Um, so I'm kind of at a lull just for a little bit, simply because I, I don't want to start sheathing the roof myself. Um, two reasons. One, it's really hard to at least uh, get the first, it's hard for me, to get the uh, first row of sheathing on uh, perfectly straight, which is what everything builds on. So the first one's got to be on there perfectly straight on the line and everything else. It's also on the edge uh, of the roof. So, um, I, you know, once you get the first row on, something can hold the second row, third row, and all the way up. So it's a little easier. And you got something to stand on, too. Um, trying to put a row, trying to put that sheet on with the boom, you can't see the line because you're, you're on off the roof, standing in the boom. Trying to line it up, it just doesn't work. So I'm sure there's an easier way for people who do this for a living. Monday, I got uh, uh, a guy coming out that uh, helped me, uh, was part of the crew that helped me set the trusses. Um, and if I haven't mentioned before, I mean, he's a uh, uh, super, super guy, great work ethic. You know, he's always busy, always hustling. Um, uh, he's also apparently part squirrel because he jumps up in the rafters and runs around. He's also a, a carpenter by trade. He's dad was and everything else so he knows what he's doing so i'm going to get him to help me with the roofing and we'll go through that so that's the second part i don't want to i don't want to make any mistakes that actually help him that that slow him down when he gets here so i'm not going to mess with the roof all that say i'm not going to mess with the roof <clears throat> babbling um okay so i said i was going to take this uh um fabric out uh yesterday um Having thought about it, I mean, I put so much time and effort to get it up in there. Um, and the other thing was I was talking about how there were gaps there simply because of the way it was, and I didn't think it would hold the foam. The guys are not shooting the foam from the ground. They're on scaffolding, so they're shooting it level. So, And it's not, you know, 200 pounds of pressure as it goes squirting through there. So um, what I think I'll do is just kind of clean that up a little bit. I did find some uh, fabric last night on Amazon that's uh, five feet wide. Because it was none here in the local area, so there's there's five, five it's five feet wide. It'll show up here on Tuesday. 
uh, and then I can I can finish this part out over here and then uh, finish the front part out over there but I'm gonna clean this up today and and just make that usable there's no sense wasting what I did um, and then from there we'll see what other small things I can do around here to get things kind of ready for uh, Monday uh, yeah we'll see what we get okay here we go okay end of day five Friday. So today was about uh, small things, just trying to get things done, straightened out, uh, getting ready for our roof tomorrow, our roof on Monday. Um, bathroom, measured out the uh, um, toilets, the uh, showers. Oh, and by the way, Sitka decided that the house was far enough along where she could just jump up in and walk around now. I guess before it wasn't done enough for her, so she wouldn't have visited the house. Now, she's just up in here wandering around. It's nice when you look down and next thing you know, there's a dog next to you. Um, cut out the door. It's amazing when you get the door openings and stuff, how open this place is gonna be when you get the light and everything else in here. So this will be out on the back deck. And I'll uh, get out there with a brush hog and clean all that up where you can go down into the woods and look nice. So you can see the deer. Anyway, uh, let's see. Sun decided to peek out from behind the clouds. I also, sorry, you're getting uh, vertigo again. I went ahead and uh, didn't take that down. I just cleaned it up. I clearly wasn't taking my time when I put it up there. So I just uh, restapled some stuff, closed up the gaps and everything else. Uh, actually had enough to finish out one piece back over here. Um, so I don't need that four foot roll anymore. Uh, I'll just run by the local hardware store in town tomorrow. Excuse for breakfast. Um, and, uh, finish up this and then do the one on this side. No big deal. So just take a little extra time and doing just fine. But that's, uh, that's the end of day five. And that's not going to be your bed because that's the kitchen. So anyway, okay. Okay, day six, Saturday. Uh, it's a half day today. Uh, neighbor's having a uh, birthday party. So uh, heading over there for uh, uh, a cookout. Good excuse. Um, went in, uh, grabbed some breakfast this morning, got some more uh, landscape fabric, finish up. And you can see uh, kind of up here, this still needs to be done. There's the row up the top, it still needs to be done here and then it needs to go this way other, I don't know, six, eight feet. And then I have uh, the front part over here I need to do. Um, figure if I can get the fabric off and get that all straightened out this morning, then uh, then I'll be good. Uh, that should get us uh, settled for the week and then uh, ready for uh, Monday. Uh, the uh, tropical storm that's going on, depending on which way it goes, we'll see if we get any rain on Monday because if we get rain on Monday, we ain't working on the roof. So we'll see, anyway. Here we go. Okay. It's, uh, this is new. It's 940 and that's the end. 940 AM. And this is the end of day six. Uh, got all the, um, fabric up for the, uh, insulating foam. There's a little bit that I still need to do, uh, right in front of the front door, but I can't do that because it attaches, uh, to the uh, trusses and I don't want to be in the way when we're, uh, I don't want it to be in the way when we're putting sheathing on next week. So I'll do it afterwards. I can get up there, no problem, after the roof's on. I still got to get up there and attach all of these, uh, um, all this fabric. I left flaps laying down. I got to attach it to uh, uh, the roof. That way the foam goes all the way up to the roof. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So, uh, uh, end of the week, um, all of the trusses up this week, all of the uh, uh, supports are in. Uh, once, uh, once I get the uh, sheathing on, then uh, I need to put in a couple more pieces of support for the hinge walls. I talked about that earlier, how they're, they're since they're sitting on top of the, uh, um, well, the gable ends, since they're sitting on top of the gable uh, walls, they have a tendency to be a hinge because they're, they're, there's nothing attached them at the bottom 
uh, except a couple of pieces of uh, two by four. So they're not one solid wall all the way up. They're two walls sitting on top of each other, creating a hinge. So I need to put some support on that. All kinds of hand and arm signals going on here. Um, people watching this steal in third base. Um, okay, so uh, that's done. Uh, really, all we're waiting on is uh, sheathing uh, next week.